Alex is a uh, punts. I mean, when you pin you know the the offense back inside the five yard line, and he's always been good at that. Um, but also the the guys getting down there and being in position is, is big to it as well. Which how important was that? Uh, uh, it was critical. You know. I Special teams can be looked at, in my opinion, in two different ways, right? In the return game, you want to be explosive. But then in, in your cover units, you want to make sure that you control field position. I thought we did a really good job of that the other night, um, especially in the two plays you're referring to with, with Alex. Um, really, I mean, he's super gifted in terms of his ability to in those sky kick situations. But um, the guys covering, you know, Jamie Robinson, Pokey, uh, Ja'Kai, uh, they did a great job of getting to their landmarks. You know, Alex put the ball where it needed to be, and and those are critical plays in the game because it does tip the the field position uh, in, in significant favor of us, and and uh, you know force them to have long drives. And, and one of them, obviously, we got the interception right off of it. And and those are the things I try to show them. You know, on on Sunday is, you know, yes, the play in and of itself is was was tremendous, but this is how you impacted the game. So three plays later, Greed gets a pick, and, and then we go ahead and score. So um, all, all three units working together, um, you know, it, it's a big deal uh, in terms of, of how we can control field position. We've seen Patrick Payton impact games or even practices with just his arm length to deflect passes and, and whatnot. But like the, the play he made to force the fumble, the awareness of along with just like the physical attributes there to be able to swat it down. It's how impressive was that for a guy of his lack of experience. Yeah, you know, one of the things with, with Patrick that um, obviously is one of his gifts is he is tremendously long. And, and that's one of the things that, that you look at in terms of recruiting when, when you're looking for edge rushers is that length. But the thing that makes Patrick special, in my opinion, is to be able to have the wherewithal in a game situation like that, um, to allow the game to slow down enough for him to have the awareness to, to you know, get the ball out. Um, get his hands up and deflect passes like Pat does a lot of things that um, that you know aren't you we teach and drill but his ability to then execute it in the moment um, is is awesome like he's he's got some natural instinct to him um, he's a football player I mean and I think that's sometimes the best compliment you can give a guy is when you can just say he's a he's got he's a football player he's got great football aptitude he's smart um, he understands the game. I think he visualizes things like that happening before they happen. So when it does show up, uh, it seems like it slows down for him. But um, he definitely plays uh, like a guy with more experience than what he has. And, and he, he, he keeps getting better. And, and you know, I, I can't say enough good things about the way he's approached his work over the last you know, eight or nine weeks. Did that punter catch a not real catchable punt? Uh, Mike has been really good at it all year, kind of running up and catching them. But he had some that were just kind of wobbly and weird, and Mike has stayed away. Yeah, you know they, they do a they do a great job, um, you know, just of, of trying to keep the ball out of your hands, and um, you know, especially in a in a game situation where you're really in control of the game, like we were. Um, you know, I trust Micah to make good decisions back there, and um, you could tell that they were directionally punting the ball away from him. Um, you know, that Aussie style of kicking with some of the low trajectory uh, with it, and I think he made good judgments. You know, it, and yes, there was a little bit of hidden yardage that we gave up when the ball hit and rolled, but in a game where you have control and you, there's a significant lead, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position to create a, a turnover. And um, you know, I, I think he did a good job in, in terms of feeling the ones he could. And the ones that he didn't, you know, I thought those were good decisions. Uh, throughout the game, but, but even early, I think maybe the first drive, I mean, like you guys are rotating so many defensive linemen and putting young guys out there in a huge game um, early in the game. Um, is there still any trepidation when you put those guys out there? Or are you guys confident now that it's just like starters? You know, really, really no concerns, and and I do think that is the the silver lining or the blessing in disguise that showed up early in the year uh, when those guys were forced into those situations because of some of the injuries that we had. Um, at this point, you know, with with like I'll use Deans as an example, but um, we certainly could use tackles as well. But you know, I have no like Leonard and Pat just roll in with with Derek and Verse and um, they were basically on alternating series the other night and I told them don't even ask me like who's up next it's just every other series change it now I'll make the substitutions within the series but you guys roll it through and the reason I feel confident and comfortable with that is because of the work that they were able to get 
you know, over the last six or seven weeks uh, when we did have some nicks and some injuries uh, up front and the experience. But inside, you know, talking about like a Josh Farmer or um, Malcolm Ray or, um, you know, the whole group that that's rolling through with Coop and Fabo. I mean, it, like, I think that they're they're becoming more of an interchangeable group and uh, we feel comfortable with it. After the game, uh, Jared Verse said this, this is probably the most fun he's ever had playing football for you as a, as a coach, as a mentor to hear that. I guess the, is that one of the nicest things or most rewarding things you can hear as a coach? You know, the, it, honestly, that, that did mean a lot when I saw the quote. I mean, I, I, didn't, I wasn't in the press conference. I saw it on Twitter after, after the game. And um, that, that does speak to the, the fact that we try to do things the right way um, in every facet of the program. And uh, the fact that he's having that experience you know, says that we're, we are probably doing some things right. And, uh, you know, and, and how we coach and how we treat people, uh, how we mentor, um, how we appreciate the guy's work. And, um, you know, I've always said that I, I feel like, you know, the, the players are extension of your family. And, you know, even with my own kids, I'm going to tell them the truth. It might not always be what they want to hear, but it's going to be the truth. And, um, you know, I think, I think when, when you're like that as a position coach or as a father or just, just as a person, um, people respect that because people want honesty. And uh, you know, I think Jared's experience here has, has been good. And, you know, I hope it, uh, it continues for a little while. We'll see. It looked like um, in the uh, – I think you guys – it was a Fabian that broke the rock after the yes. game. Um, I know he's part, – part of it's probably just him being back and being full go. But – um, how impactful was he in, in that game? Fabian played well. You know, Fabian did make an impact in the game. You know, just his his physical presence, obviously, but also just um, his leadership and and just what he brings to the defensive line makes a big deal. Um, and I and I think and and I don't want to speak for Coach in any way, but Coach Norvell did uh, say that he. Fabian was there representing the defense because he thought the defense deserved to break the rock. So, um, you know, I think that was more of him representing the whole group as opposed to just an individual effort. Um, but, you know, I, he is that leader of the defense. So if there was going to be a defensive represent, representative, it, it would be him. You know, Mike is a guy who moved thousands of miles across the country to come here to, to make plays. And when he's not involved offensively, do you have to talk to him about returning punts to, to not force things, or is he just so mature that you – you can trust the fact that he's hungry to make plays, but he'll still do the right thing. No, you know, I, he's mature. I think I think he understands. He's not going to put um, – I think he more – the only time I've ever seen him uh, press at all is when he felt like from a team perspective we needed to spark something and get something going. I don't think it's ever had to do with him individually in terms of, um, you know, wanting to make plays himself. I mean, he makes – he makes, uh, you know, like I say, I think he makes good decisions. I trust him, um, you know, and, and he's had some pretty good return opportunities, and I, and I think we'll continue to create those for him. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's got a, a, a great uh, competitive spirit to him, but he's also a good decision maker. Uh, I, th I think Jamie's the one that downed the first punt down there. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Um, does he always play? Is he on – how many special teams units is he on? Jamie starts on two special teams units. He starts on kickoff cover and on punt. What does that say about him? Because he plays more snaps than anybody on the defense. He hardly ever comes off the field. For him to still give you that kind of effort on punt, what does it say about him? And I guess what does it say about y'all's belief in him just being a football player and going and making plays in any – Yeah, you know, I think all that starts with the culture um, that, that Coach Norvell uh, has brought here in terms of how we approach our special teams. Um, we play our best players on our units, and that's really across the board, you know, regardless of position that you're talking about. And, you know, on kickoff cover, those are going to be the real guys that run down on kickoff. And, and same for punt. You know, when we start kind of deciding depth charts, um, the punt unit is the first one that, that we start deciding who's going to be on that. And, um, you know, when, when your best players are also valuable special teams guys, um, obviously it's, it's important for the program. But it goes both ways um, because we also understand that our guys aspire to have careers in the NFL. And for the most part, unless you're, you know, the handful of select guys, you are on those special teams units. And I think they need, our guys understand that they need to put that on tape as well. Um, that if they're going to be a, a draftable player, that they're going to have to show that they also create some special teams value. And uh, I think they, they embrace that and take advantage of the opportunities that they have. 
Sticking with Jamie, understanding he's not part of your position group, but you're involved with pass rush patch packages and whatnot. Like, what does Jamie do well as a blitzer, and, and how good has he been in that role as it's expanded for him this, this season? Uh, Jamie's a really good blitzer, and I think for a couple of reasons. You know, one, he has a knack in terms of timing. I think he does a really good job timing his blitzes. Um, he's got great short area quickness, meaning like he can get to top speed in, in a very quick, short amount of time, very quickly. Um, you know, and I think those two things combined have give him success. Obviously, that was kind of an iconic play that that he made around the goal line. Um, you know, you always, every time they do, uh, you know, either advertisements or, or little video clips of of big Miami Florida State games. You know, you see that like Marvin Jones hit, and, and that was kind of like a defining moment in that that game. Like to me, in like the this modern time, like that play is gonna be one of those clips. Um, because it, it spoke more than just what the play was. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You guys.